Is this the end of Fry's Electronics? Well, this is it. This is the end of Fry's Electronics. This particular store, like many of the stores they had, used to be an incredible universe. I used to come back here back in the 90s and I loved it. It was Incredible Universe, which was a Tandy Corporation and I'm sure you could uh, research that. There's lots of videos on, on Incredible Universe. And Fry's took over in the very late 90s, California company. And the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of the customer, or the customers, a lot of the viewers that watch my channel, they're not so much car guys as they are nerds because we do a lot of nerd stuff and we do a lot of car, cool car stuff. But Fry's Electronics has been an important part of that because we've always come here and got a lot of things that we use to build our time machines and Ghostbuster cars when it comes to wiring, terminals, electronic components, soldering materials, so all kinds of things. And it was basically, I think Fry's was one of the reasons that Radio Shack partially went out of business, which is kind of funny because it killed not only the Tandy Corporation's incredible universe, but also Radio Shack with these large big box versions of Radio Shack like Fry's where you could get anything and everything electronics. But it just cannot hold a candle to all the online retailers, whether it's eBay, whether it's uh, Amazon, and, and um, you know, even some of the retailers like out of New York where people get a lot of their cameras like B&H Photo and Adorama and all those different things. Um, don't forget, you know, I'm a video guy from way back. I was a broadcast engineer. I ran a television network back in the late 90s and I built mobile production video trucks and I was an editor and a cameraman and all those things. So I did a lot of video stuff here. They used to have a huge video section. When this was, uh, back in when it was Incredible Universe, they used to have probably the best selection of video stuff you could find anywhere when it came to cameras and tripods and editing equipment and uh, things like that. But now all that stuff's relegated to just software and a USB dongle. And uh, now things are dire. So I've been told that they are closing this year. They're, they'll be closed by December. And I've heard other rumors that they were only going to close properties they didn't own. But it's pretty clear that you can spot which properties are, are going to close because they are no longer stocking inventory. Uh, and they're cutting back on all of their staff. Uh, and I know a lot of friends that work for Fry's that are good friends of mine and, and they've quit or they've moved on, they found another gig because they know the writing's on the wall. They're no longer stocking merchandise. They're not selling at a discount though, which is odd. I, I was told that they're gonna wait for Black Friday and blow everything out and then they're gonna shutter the stores. But these are all rumors, this is all supposition and uh, you know, because an employee isn't going to tell you these things directly because, you know, it would probably jeopardize their job. But it's clear if you go to any fries anywhere, and I've been to fries all over the country. We have a lot of them here in Dallas-Fort Worth. This is the one in Arlington, uh, but I've been to the one out in Burbank, and I've been to the other ones in California and Las Vegas. Uh, I went to the one in Las Vegas all the time. They're right across from Mandalay Bay. And it's kind of bumming me out because this is just the end of an era where... You know, the, the experience of walking around and shopping is gonna go away. What's gonna happen in the future is all shopping is gonna be done online. You're only gonna be able to buy things by looking at it on a screen, buying it, getting it shipped to you. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, maybe you send it back. And the experience of the tactile feeling of coming in and checking out the product that you want, that's just going away. And uh, it's, it's gonna be a whole different world. I'm walking around here, I'm, I'm quite frankly depressed. The only things they seem to have plenty of stock of is stuff like perfume. You want some $5 perfume? Oh, they got lots of that. But if you want, uh, you know, the hard to get stuff, there's, there's certain things that they have a ton of stock of. And you can clearly tell that those are the things that don't sell. And what this really teaches you about some of the retail is you can find out what are the things that keep them alive and they sell a lot of. So clearly they sell a lot of AC electrical plugs, power strips, and obviously a lot of batteries because the batteries are just like gone. Like there's, there's a few batteries and chargers. Actually, this is the same charger, by the way, that we use uh, on our Ghostbuster Proton Packs. I used to come up here and buy every one of these they had. But I admit, here they are, they're 25 bucks. I found a place to get them online for like 
15 bucks and I'd buy a case of them at a time. And that's what happened. You know, they just can't compete with online. Their hard drives are down to nothing. Their networking is like gone. It's pretty clear to me that local networking guys would source fries when they, in a hurry, they needed a piece of networking device, a cable, a box, a router, a mount. And, and that's pretty clear um, because that stuff is just, it's gone. Um, you know, all the networking stuff, gone. So actually I see this as an opportunity for like somebody in the Dallas-Fort Worth area since all techs uh, left, you know, this might be a good time to open up a networking supply of his uh, place because all the networking stuff is gone. A lot of the components are pretty wiped out too. You know, the Radio Shack no longer around. This was the only place that you could go and come and get resistors and diodes and that kind of thing, uh, project boxes. So it's just interesting to me walking around. You can kind of see what is a good seller and what isn't. I mean, again, testing leads, uh, again, for networking, gone. All the networking stuff wiped out. So again, this kind of shows the things that they invested into that were bad investments for inventory. Backpacks. No one is coming here and buying a backpack. They have tons of backpacks and luggage. Strangely enough, nobody was coming to Fry's to buy any backpacks or luggage. Uh, just like standard paper consumables. No, but you can go to Walmart and get these for nothing. They have tons and tons of paper goods. Uh, but they got like chairs, lots of chairs, lots of chairs. Um, something else I thought that was strange that they had a huge inventory of was uh, generators, power supplies. Down this aisle, these are all UPS backup batteries and generators. A whole row of generators. You need a generator, this might be a good spot to check. But this is interesting. Take a look at this. All right, here is the uh, backstock warehouse. This would normally be full of goods, televisions, computers, monitors, boxes and boxes of, you know, stuff. And it's all gone, nothing. There's nothing back there except bubble wrap, packing material, boxes. And it looks, looks like it might be taken apart the shelving over here. I was just talking to a couple of the employees that don't wanna be on camera, of course. And they were talking about how they've been cut down to part-time, you know, they're, they're losing their full-time benefits. Uh, they're getting ready to staff. There's no deliveries coming in there except for packing materials to start packing things up, getting ready. You know, I don't know if they're gonna make it to December, but a lot of the employees are not being told anything. They're being kept in the dark, which is a really crappy thing to do. I know it's a family owned company. And I think that what's happening is they, they don't want people just bailing on them and then they have no staff and they'll never be able to hire anybody. And they would be forced to hire temporary work to come in which cost them a lot more money because they're probably only paying minimum wage or a little bit better. And, um, you know, if they hire temporaries, they're going to be paying double that, if not triple that for temporary people. So they don't want all the employees to bail. But I could tell you, number one, from looking at the, all the stores around the country and the reports I'm hearing, if you work for Fry's, you better be sending out resumes and you better have a job by the end of October or November. Uh, they may be offering incentives for you to stay, and if they do the Black Friday closeout, which is what I expect they would do, um, that would be the smartest thing to liquidate everything here so that they don't have to move it and then re try to resell it. They may be trying to keep a certain amount of stock to keep for their online retailing, but uh, as a businessman myself, um, every day that they keep the store open, just the air conditioning alone in here probably costs them you know, who knows, a thousand bucks a day just to cool this place off, plus all the staffing. So they're, they're, they're spending multiple thousands of dollars per day. They're already in the negative and they're already losing. So they can't possibly sell enough stuff to plug the hole of the money flowing out. Uh, so this is your last chance to get the fries, to get anything you want to get your hands on. But you know what? I'm walking around here looking for stuff to buy. And I, I got to be honest, the, the stock is so low and, I can't, and nothing's really on sale. So I really haven't been able to find anything that I really want that I can't just order online. And that's really the problem. But I gotta admit, it bums me out, man. It bums me out. I was here at the grand opening in 1998, and now I'm gonna be at the grand closing 20 years later. One employee I just talked to was asking me, are you from home office? We've had a lot of those people come and 
walking around and having meetings. I was like, no, I'm not from the home office. Uh, I'm just a fan. I'm just a customer. I love fries. And uh, we've been talking about this. And none of the employees have been told anything and none of them know they're actually being led to believe that they're just going to be doing some restructuring. I go, no, you, you are not going to have a job by the end of this year here. So uh, there's, she said, well, we are receiving some inventory like TVs. I said, probably they have a main distribution warehouse that's still full of TVs and stuff like that. And they need to get rid of those, but they're not getting anything from vendors. I guarantee it. Unless they're just basic consumables, like things that they probably make money off of, like food, snacks, drinks, uh, the basic consumables that everybody buys at, you know, when they come here. But like the, the, I'm looking at printer ink and things like there's like, you know, uh, phone cases, you know, they're not buying anything new. Uh, I've talked to a lot of the employees here. Nobody has a clue what's going on. They've just all confirmed that they've all been put on part-time and uh, their hours have been cut and part-time can be like 35 hours. You know what I mean? So it's a bummer, man. It's a bummer. I also noticed that the vendors are taking out their displays. There used to be a gigantic Bose headphone and speaker display here that they've now uh, just put some arcade games here. And what it is, the vendors don't want to get stuck in a situation where the store gets locked, maybe in foreclosure and the doors are locked and they can't get to their stuff and it gets liquidated. So the vendors are making an effort to come in here and take back their displays and inventory. So they've relegated now to just you know, they, they have they have some tabletop displays and these aren't really reusable or worth a lot of money but the display that they used to have here uh, was pretty significant and uh, I'm noticing that a lot of the big vendor displays are all gone now there's a warning for you I've also noticed that they have an overstock of appliances that have come directly from factory they haven't been uncrated and I think that that's because they're, you know, liquidating warehouses. So this is all refrigerators that they don't normally have on the floor and they're trying to get them out. I bet in Black Friday or whenever they have their major sale, you're going to be able to get this stuff like really good price. So I would definitely check with your fries for a refrigerator. I bet they're going to have a lot of them, especially all these scratch and dent models. You'd probably be able to get these for like pennies. There's so many of the fridges out here that are just like beat to death look, look at this thing it's like got bullet holes in it and by the way uh, don't buy samsung samsung sucks every samsung appliance i've ever had has been junk just thought i'd throw that in also the em the employees which are all on commission have been overly aggressive they literally attack me it, it, it's like uh because they're starving to death no one's coming in here and buying anything they haven't discounted anything and all the commission salespeople, they work in appliances, TVs, and they are on you like, like get off of me, get off of me. It's annoying. The poor people are starving and they're gonna be out of work. If you work for Fry's, get your resume ready, because you, just like Fry's, are out of business. So many of the shelves that used to hold like beauty supply stuff, this used to all be hair dryers, they just filled the shelves with water. And they seem to have lots of drinks available, liquidating, liquidating back stock of beverages. So yeah, I just went in the bathroom. No paper, no paper towels, no soap. They're not even stocking the bathroom. Really? Well, fries, I'm gonna miss you. I enjoyed shopping here for the last 20 years and uh, it was a lot of fun. Got a lot of great stuff, built a lot of great things. And uh, thanks for, you know, being here for us. I'm sorry that progress has destroyed you, uh, if you want to call that progress. And uh, my heart goes out to all the employees who've, who've made a career here at Fry's. I have some that are friends and they're gonna be losing their jobs. And listen, I don't work for the company. I don't have any hard evidence about what it, what's going on here. The only thing that I could tell you for sure is that um, it's clear to me that they're in the throes of death. Fries is going away and people are losing their jobs and we'll no longer have that experience. And there may be other 
smaller versions of fries that'll pop up in certain areas, maybe with liquidation. But, I, you know, maybe they'll relegate themselves down to a much smaller version or maybe just online or maybe go away completely. But uh, for the nerds out there like me, this really sucks. So thanks for watching. And uh, this is the normal kind of video that I generally do. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check out some other videos. We will be doing a lot more videos about the, uh, the Rolls Royce uh, coming up soon. And we're doing some things with some of our other cars. We're building an Ecto-1 and another DeLorean time machine. And today, for those of you that are into my cars, I'm in my Cadillac CTS-V wagon. People love that car. Just like me, I love it, it's fast. You can fit a lot of stuff in the back. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye-bye. Okay, hey guys, this is a little bit of bonus footage for the people who sit and watch all the way to the end. Now, if you're like me, a car guy and electronics guy, one thing that both car people and electronics people have in common is that we love flashlights. Not flashlights. Flashlight. Okay, we love those two. I love flashlights, and I'm always looking for the brightest, smallest, longest lasting flashlight that I can find. And this is the Quest. Now I used to walk around with an actual holster on my belt with a little uh, lithium ion flashlight on it. But I just found this one by a company called Nightcore. This, this is the box, Nightcore. And you're not reading that wrong. It says 1000 lumens. Okay, there is a little catch though. And it's called the TUP, the top. Anyway, this is a rechargeable light. I have it over here charging. And here it is, right? Now, this is not a paid endorsement. I bought this thing. This was not sent to me for free. But I was so blown away by this thing, I just had to tell you about it, okay? So what you've got on here is a little screen so that when you turn it on, the little screen comes on and, and, and it will tell you how much voltage you have, what mode you're in. And the way it works is when you turn it on, um, you can choose the mode. <coughs> the first mode is like one lumen or whatever, and it tells you that you've got like 70 minutes, right? Right? It's like one lumen, you got seven, 70 minutes of, of light. Now, this is pretty dim. Then the next mode, mode two, is 15 lumens, and it says you've got 18 minutes of that. The next mode, 65 lumens and you've got nine minutes of that next mode 200 lumens you got about three minutes of that and then the next and then when you hold down the thing you get a thousand lumens for 30 seconds 24 seconds but i mean yeah don't do that so you only get 30 seconds of a thousand lumens but look how tiny it is so like if you were trying to signal a plane, it's rechargeable, it's really lightweight, it comes in either gray or black, it's got a, a cool metal uh, thing you can snap on here, it's got the rechargeable port here. But uh, how cool is that? Now it is a little pricey. It's about 65, 70 bucks. However, this is a premium product, in my opinion. This is something where, you know, if, if you wanna use the, the very dim light, I mean, you could use that for over an hour but it's so small, it's rechargeable, it's sexy as hell, I think, and um, I just had to share it with you. So it's called the Nightcore 1000 Lumen TUP, available on Amazon, and the link for it is below. Yes, it's an affiliate link, so if you like it, hey, buy it, pick up some other stuff and help me out. But um, it says here, utilizes a Cree XPL HD V6 LED to emit up to 1000 lumens. OLED display, built-in uh, 1200 milliamp lithium ion for one time up to 70 hours. Oh, did I read that wrong? So one lumen is not 70 minutes. That's 70 hours. What? So you could have that, you know, this, if you're trapped in a cave, you can literally run this for like a week like that, I guess. <laughs> And um, anyway, I just was really impressed with this. I have a lot of flashlights. Another flashlight that I carry with me on my keychain, which is what I was looking for, 
is made by uh, Phoenix, and I'll put a link to this one too. It's this little bitty thing here, and the way it works is you unscrew the end, and there's a little USB charger right there at the end, and it doesn't run for very long, but look how little it is, and it's got two stages. It's got the pretty bright, and then the really bright, hold on, really bright. And I think it's like 200 lumens. So if that's 200 lumens, let me see what this one looks like with 200 lumens. Yeah, that's pretty comparable. If you see this, this just has a wider spotlight and it's a lot cleaner, I think. But you know, this thing is great. So what I did with this is I put it on this little snap ring. And when you're really in a bind, you can do this. You know, and so it's just an emergency flashlight when you're just out and you've got to have some kind of flashlight, you know, to find your keys or something. And it's just a, now most of us use our phones now as a flashlight. And that's, but sometimes you're on the phone to tech support, you're calling roadside assistance and you need a flashlight, whatever the situation is. It's good to have a little flashlight. So this thing is really cool, but it doesn't run for very long. And uh, this thing runs for much longer. And I mean, it's significantly bigger, but you know, and, and this one is much cheaper. I, I want to say these are like 30 bucks, but two separate things. This thing was a thousand lumens. That's insane for such a tiny little light. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, click the link below if you want to order any of these. There's just a bonus video. I thought I'd rather than make a whole video on it. I just thought I'd throw it in at the end of this one because anybody who would go to Fry's Electronics would think these flashlights are cool. I'm Video Bob. Thanks for watching.